So, big, big welcome to Spiel Talk Museum. It's amazing to see you all here. Uh, it's uh, really like a kind of beginning of an end for me with this machine. It's like a perfect circle. And uh, on Monday this week, this machine was in boxes on the floor. And me and Lois from Utrecht have been working the whole week to get it into some kind of demonstration-able condition. And uh, I'm excited to show you how bad it works. <laughs> and, but I'm even more excited today uh, that Joost from Museum Spielpark is gonna take us all on a guided tour of the museum. Because three years ago, I was here, we played with my band Wintergatan in Utrecht. And the festival we played that said, you're gonna love Museum Spielpark. And everything was very hectical and it was a tight schedule, but I was saying, okay, okay I'll, I'll, I'll go check it out. And after a full day here, my brain was on fire. <laughs> and um, I, walked, I walked out of that visit with the idea of building something programmable. This is the programming wheel. So the second inspiration came from a German engineer called Matthias Wandel, who built a lot of marble machines. So I'm not the only one who's building marble machines. Marble machines is a big culture. So a little bit what I did is that I took the inspiration from Museum Spiel Clock and combined it with the inspiration from marble machines and I built a programmable marble machine. So the first thing that will happen is that I will show you the test program and quite soon after that we're gonna give over to Jolt who's gonna show the collection and then we'll come back here after the tour and I'm gonna show you more about this first marble machine I'm gonna tell you more about how the video was made and I also want to talk about the thing that you're later going to see on that screen because you're standing in the middle of the beam, that's no problem. <laughs> but what you see behind there is the sneak peeks of the Marble Machine X, which is the new Marble Machine that we are building now. So in this test program, uh, we have tried to make the machine to play this. And then finish with the symbol. So, uh, let's see how that goes. Disappointing to you as it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, good. So, um, yes, uh, without further ado, I want to give the word to Joost. Yeah, we're gonna go uh, walk around the museum for uh, about 30 to 45 minutes and have a look at some instruments that we have here that inspired Martin to, to build this machine. After that we're gonna come back here and we're gonna have a look at the, at the new marble machine, the marble machine X. And you can of course ask some questions then. So Welcome to Museum Spilklok everybody, first of all. My name is, well I'm Joost, I was already introduced of course. Uh, and I'm a tour guide here in the museum. Uh, and this is a museum for mechanical musical instruments. Which basically means that all the instruments that we have here produce music by themselves. So I only have to push buttons and pull strings and everything will just start working. And the first instrument that we usually start the tour with is the Carillion, because the Carillion is the oldest mechanical musical instrument. At least it's the musical instrument of which we know for certain that it existed as first. Um, and when you look at it, you can already see some similarities with the marble machine that Martin made, which is the drum. The drum, of course. The drum works like this. It moves upwards and the metal pins on the drums, they pull up these wooden bars and the wooden bars are connected with a string to the hammer, which you can see up there. You can already see it moving right now. This drum, programming wheel, that it's, of course, when you see it, it's very obvious what it does. On some of our other instruments, I have the same 
uh, mechanical thing, but it was this drum who made me want to build something like this, because I could really see how it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and two days ago, we were invited to the Dom Toren, me and Lois, the clockmaking student who's been helping with the thing. And if you hear the big clock tower in Utrecht, the Dom Toren, it looks exactly like this, only a thousand times bigger. And Malgusia played the Marble Machine song yesterday for whole Utrecht. And so she's playing on a thing like this. And she told me that you don't... Can I play it? Yeah, sure. No, you can't. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't do this. Yeah, they don't all work. I'm so happy when other machines also have problems. Okay? But you play with your fists like this. So she sits 70 meters up the sky and it's the Stadsbeireder from Utrecht and she has her office in the tower plays mu acoustic music for whole Utrecht every week. So that's pretty cool. No <laughs> okay, we're going to go downstairs again and have a look at some uh, instruments that we used inside. Oh. Oh. Okay, we're going to spend some time uh, discussing a few different possibilities for a mechanical musical instrument to function. Starting with the baby organ. So to have a mechanical musical instrument you need three elements. Uh, and the first is a sound source, and actually every musical instrument needs a sound source, of course. Uh, but in this case, it's organ pipes. In your case, it would be the vibraphone and the bass guitar and the drums. So it could also be multiple sound sources. That's not a problem. Uh, the organ pipes, you can see them over here. For every note, there's a different pipe. So it's like a mechanical pan flute, uh, which you would have to move along your lips. Uh, in this case, they're opened and closed by a cylinder. And that's the musical program. So the programming wheel, the term is not that incorrect because we call this a musical program, like a scroll or a drum or a, or a cylinder. No, the big difference is uh, that the drum is reprogrammable. So you can change the pins around. A cylinder, the pins are stuck, but uh, the cylinder has more melodies on it. If you move it up a bit, a different rows of pins come underneath the keyboard and it plays a different melody. So for every note, there are a few tracks or the different melodies that are on the cylinder. So they were pretty complicated to, to program back in the days. It would take about three weeks to, to build one for a music box, for instance. So, come on, that says something. Um, right. There's a huge disadvantage to using either a cylinder or a drum. Sure, that's one yeah. song per revolution. Isn't yeah, it? it's only one song per revolution. They did invent a way to do it in a circular uh, spiral yeah. motion, but that was really hard to build, so that didn't really work. In 1980, uh, no, other way around, 1890, something really cool for it was invented. And that's the paper scroll. And the paper scroll made it possible to play up to about 15 to 20 minutes of music, depending on how fast you were letting the scroll go through. And a piano like this, a player piano, uh, sometimes called a pianola also, that's what we call it in Dutch most of the time, uh, works with su such a paper scroll, you would have to pedal it with your feet, which is fun, uh, which means that you're the power source of the instrument, but you don't have to play any notes, so it's still a mechanical musical instrument, so you're just powering the instrument. And there we go. the outside usable system for this, uh, the outdoor system, which is the organ and the organ book. And we're going to go to the end of the hall to the left for that. So this is an organ book, this is a cardboard book. Kind of like the paper, it's got holes in it, and the holes tell the organ in this case uh, what to play. But this is always dragged through at the same tempo. Now why could they do that? <coughs> That's because uh, with the scroll, you have to roll it up and there's a certain limit to it how many times you can roll it because otherwise the paper breaks down or it compresses too much. 
In this case, you could just make it as long as you want. We've got books in the other room that are this big. If you put them in an organ, they play for 45 minutes. And you don't have to do anything because they work on electricity, which is nice, of course. Um, with this organ, I can show you very clearly, clearly how this system works. You've got a keyboard over here with metal pins on it. And the metal pins are connected to the organ pipes. When the pins are up, the organ pipes are opened and they produce sound. When you push the pins down, you, you close the organ pipes up and you hear nothing. That's our own organ. So right now, all the pins are up. Uh, if I were to play it right now, what would be here? Yeah. So you hear all the organ pipes at once. Hoef je lekker snel draaien. Maar nog snel. Goed zo. also gets bigger. <laughs> so let's, uh, we're going to have a listen to a, a big organ and for that we're going to go through the secret door. <laughs> The reason uh, this was so popular in those days is that they did already invent the gramophone. From about 1900 on, people could own gramophone records at home. But they were still recorded in those days acoustically, so with a big horn in front of an orchestra, which would sound pretty crappy. Um, the best way of listening music in those days in a public space, like for instance a restaurant or a cafe, is through the instrument behind you. This is called an orchestrion. An orchestrion, made it in the Netherlands. And these instruments were used to, uh, to imitate music that was played by people. So, where the gramophone couldn't really produce the sounds that regular instruments produced in those days, this instrument could. You see all the brass instruments inside of it, all the flutes. Later on, they even started putting pianos inside of it and xylophones, for instance. This is a pretty old one. This is from 1890. Uh, funny story about this one is that we as a museum are the first owner. Uh, we found this instrument in a factory for coffins. <laughs> because the, the, yeah, the factory went bankrupt before it could sell this instrument and it became a coffin factory after that and well that's where we found it. You can see that this one was used in a public space because to turn it on you have to insert a coin. Is it even leuk om daar een muntje in te doen? Ja? Mag u? So we're going to end off with the loudest instrument uh, in the museum, which we're pretty close to, so you might want to take a step back in a minute. Um, this is also one of the, well, it, this instrument was built in 1918, but however, it's one of the most modern instruments in our museum because we've uh, adjusted it a little bit. We've added a MIDI machine to it, which is, uh, oh, some of you might know, which means that you can program this instrument by computer. You don't have to put it in an organ book anymore. You can uh, play it with a computer file, which kind of contains the same information as an organ book, so it's not really different. You still have to arrange everything, especially for this organ. But it does make everything a bit faster. And uh, because of uh, Martin's uh, voyage to this museum, uh, uh, me and uh, Lois, who's over there, who uh, has been uh, helping Martin all week, uh, we, took the, we took the liberty of uh, arranging the Marble Machine song for the big one, for the big organ, which is what we're going to have to listen to next. <laughs>
so we're soon gonna take your questions, but if you allow me to talk a little bit about the Marble Machine X first, I would be very happy. And uh, maybe if we can uh, not play with the small marble one. It, it was so funny because we were here working so hard, me and Lois, and then this guy came in and built this one on 30 minutes and they worked much better than my machine. <laughs> so we were thinking to sabotage them in the night, uh, but we didn't. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Marble Machine X, these are the, some drawings that we're working on right now on the Marble Machine X. And a big difference is that we're going to cut all the plywood with CNC machine. And these are the, actually the first and only pieces I've cut on my new CNC machine. You're going to see a lot of videos of the CNC machine on the YouTube channel coming up. And I wanted to show you and also later go and feel at these pieces because these are to the precision of 0 0.0001 millimeters. So if you compare this to the hand, I cut all this by hand on a bandsaw. <laughs> so, like when you're standing and making these gears, it's like after five hours you have to like slap your face, <laughs> drink some water, and do five more hours, and do you done from here to there. Um, and the, why I think Marmachine X is going to be such a success is that if we notice a problem with this one, I can go into this drawing, change this a quarter of a millimeter, make new pieces, and correct the mistake. And um, we're also using some 3D printing for the instruments. Um, we're gonna finish all these pieces with, you can put acetone to make them a nice surface and paint them, so they're not gonna look like this, they're gonna look nice. <laughs> so this is the new programming wheel. We're gonna have eight sections. This is one section of eight. And this blue plate is removable. So we're gonna build 16 plates. So we have two sets of programming sections. So when we're doing the world tour with Marble Machine X, we can start with having song number one programmed on the machine, right? And play song number one. When song number one is done, we can use these levers to click, click, and remove the blue plate and put eight new plates on with a completely new song. And we can play song number two. And then my technicians in white coats and protection glasses on stage is going to take out the pins from the first eight and make song number three. So we will, in theory, be able to play 20 songs on the Marble Machine when we play live on the Marble Machine X. That's one big difference. On this machine you would have to take the pins out and put them in again on the machine. Another big difference is the gear train and also how we're going to lift the marbles. On this machine we're lifting the marbles with this uh, bell. On the Marble Machine X we're going to lift the marbles inside the gears. So we're going to use the gears that we already need for the mechanism. So the marbles, the marbles are going to go in here and be transported half and go out here and then go out here and be transported in this inside ring. Oh, that's <laughs> Thank you, we think so too. <laughs> and there is one shaft here inside another shaft. So this inner ring will move this way and this outer ring will move the other way. So that's gonna look really impressive and gonna feel like a clockwork. And we also use the space inside the programming wheel because if you see the programming wheel is a big thing. So we're gonna put the flywheel. The flywheel on this machine is here. And that's the wheel who makes the tempo continuously, and the flywheel is going to be inside the programming wheel on the other side. And this planetary gear, this is called sun gear, planet gear and ring gear. This planetary gear is also inside the programming wheel. So we are ordered the drum, it's like Jules have told me it's called. So that is a big difference as well. Uh, the programming wheel is actually even going to move in the opposite direction from, from this machine. So here you see, the piece I have highlighted here is the piece I'm holding in my hand here. <laughs> see it? And this is what we call the marble divider. This thing will replace these stupid things that cost me so much pain. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you as quick as I can, because this is eight months in my brain and I'm going to give it to you in 20 seconds. I bent these pipes 
to get the weight of the marbles down because the friction of the parts held the cube back a little bit. So when it come out here, they didn't go too fast. And I put the, the system on and it worked perfectly. Two weeks later it stopped working and I couldn't understand why. Then I did it the same a month later. It worked, I removed everything, restarted, it worked perfectly two weeks later. And what I realized was when the pipes became dusty, the friction changed. And then, and my friend who I shared the face with said, Martin, this is not going to work. And he said it to me every day for six months. <laughs> and he was right. And I was so stuck in the same ID. And that is like a lesson maybe we all can learn. And that's my engineers now, when I tell them an ID, they're like, they're killing all my IDs. <laughs> because that's, the, that's how an engineer works. You have to try your ID super hard. So a big process for me is to learning to listen to other IDs than the ID I already have. And big, big problem with this machine, maybe the biggest problem, is that the time for this marble, the second marble, to come into playable position here is very fast. It was because we only had one channel. You remember the Carillion? We only had one channel. So watch your ears here now. And it's so when I do it manually, it's, it looks like... Oh. It looks like it's really working well. But the time frame we have to have this open is very little. So we have to adjust the timing. So as soon as you play slower, and the guides who are going to demonstrate this machine the whole summer, I'm going to have a course with them on Tuesday, <laughs> because it, they really have to fit the tempo, which is, of course, super stupid when you want to play music. So this whole system is uh, completely flawed. And here, on the Marble Machine X, the marbles are going to be on in long lines here, and the marbles are going to roll up here. So if we say this channel is the kick drum, if one marble is used there, a new marble is going to fall into that track. And the marbles are going to come out here, and since we have two channels, we can make this path much longer. So now it's almost instantly, but on the marble machine X it will be play, the marble is rolling, 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 and there it's in position. So this, will, this is the close-up of one programming wheel section. And uh, so you can see that this is one channel. And uh, so one bar starts here, and then the next bar starts here. So daga, 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 daga. So it will be 64. But to make the music, to make the music dynamic and not sound so repetitive, that's why I had the breakdown in the original song, and that's why I also changed just the chords. So the song starts in E minor, and then I, the second time we hear the same thing on the vibraphone, I change to C major under on the bass. But on the Marble Machine X, we're putting one new instrument, and it's the, I call it the stringed modulin. It's gonna sit oh, here, <laughs> and it's gonna be one string, and it's not gonna be in the programming wheel at all. So the, the idea is that I can push down a thing with my palm and play on the one string to improvise melodies or play longer melodies. So let's say I make a techno beat here. I can make a three minute long st story or melody on this one string here, as long as the bass line is very simple. Maybe I can make a bass line with open strings, or maybe I can even have some automatic or something that suddenly changes the bass line. So um, to, make, to make the music a little bit more dynamic, we introduce that. And that's going to be like a... I don't know if everyone has ever seen the instrument marxophone, but it's just... Dring, 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 dring. Some sound like that. <laughs> it's, um, it's like a little bit like my electric modulin, but on one string. And it's going to be a lot of F, like a lot of delay and reverb and compression, so it's going to be sound a little bit like a synthesizer, I hope. So you're going to use the Marble X on tour? Yeah. W will it be easy to move? We have, I have, uh, I have started. I was called uh, because he just asked if it will be easy to move. It will be in seven big parts because of the Horcruxes from Harry Potter, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, going to be in seven big cases. And there is a logistics company 
who called me already two years ago and said, we want to do the logistics with the marble machine. <laughs> and I went into their website and the first picture was when they were in an airport with like armed guards and they moved some kind of Leonardo da Vinci piece. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, they are transporting Leonardo da Vinci's pieces, I'm fine with having them uh, take care of the marble machine. <laughs> But this, he was in one of my videos, Jonas, and he knows everything about how to get. And he wants me to build two of the Marble Machine X. And this, uh, again, this kind of manufacturing makes that actually possible. So he says that we're going to have one on the other side of the Atlantic and one in Europe. And, uh, and then we also have one in spare if something, if, if we... Yeah, or if it, one of them get lost. <laughs> Sorry? The horcruxes. Yes. They cannot get lost. They can be killed though. <laughs> uh, so we need to have seven actually. Okay. Also, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it's gonna be fun. Uh, I have this big dream of, of uh, like going on a tour with Wintergatan featuring the marble machine. Because since this became a, such a big success, Everyone wants the marble machine, but the band is actually what I want to focus on the most. I just want this to be one of the one of our instruments. Mm -hmm. So once we have been on featuring marble machine, then we will be back on a good page with that. And, and I have this idea of when you're opening the concert and you have a front drop in front of the stage, you just put on like the silhouette of the machine, so you see the silhouette big. Then you just blind everyone with blinded lights and like a big bang, and then you have the front drop to like drop, and then you have 15,000 people screaming. <laughs> and then you just walk to the machine and you start to play like a dance track, and everyone starts dancing. So that's the vision uh, that we're working hard on, and that's gonna be three or four years from now on, I think. Ah, perfect. <laughs> So this is Lois who has been helping me the whole week and she couldn't sleep the first days because she was thinking about how to fix the machine and that's the kind of dedication that has saved. That's why you can see the machine now. Do we have one more? Yes. So, these you can see for yourself but this is the size of marbles for the first machine and this is the size of marbles for Marble Machine X. We had a photo sharing page where a lot of people have given IDs and one of the most fun thing is that if you saw my prototype video, then you saw that I built something of a muting mechanism that worked like this. So as long as they are connected, there will be a note played. And then I move this up, and this still moves, but there will be no note played. And then uh, a Russian guy called Alexei Ivanov on the photo sharing page, he just turned this upside down. And I said, why, why let gravity work against you when you can let gravity work for you. So this is, thanks to his ID on the foot sharing page, this is how it's built on the Marble Machine X. So now it's going to play, then we'll let it fall down. This is still going to be interacted with the, with the programming pins. Here, when I tried to mute this, we removed the things away from the programming pins. On the Marble Machine we don't have to do that, it's always interacting, but there's no connection, so the instrument will be silent. Then we unmute it and it hooks again, and so these kind of suggestions are, I'm trying to make it a little bit like in the open source kind of thing and uh, that, that's, that's really, really fun. It's difficult also to make it efficient because I get a lot of information, so it's difficult to filter. But uh, this, is, this was genius from him, upside down, 100 times better, so that was super fun. So the video was really visually pleasing, you obviously spent a lot of time as you say on it. Yes. The, there was the black marble that you yes. had going round. That really captured it for me, because we could follow what everything was happening. Yes. When did that idea come to you? It was, it was together with Hannes, who filmed the video. Me and Hannes, he was with me for half a year. Right. So, and, and, and he was as enthusiastic about it, so he got very involved, uh, the, the, the filmmaker. So me and Hannes made a video together. And I think we... It was in a discussion between me and him that I want, I see it, uh, I actually only know the word in Swedish, it's called Tretzlop. It's like, what is it called when the water goes around in nature, gets up in the clouds, rains down? Cycle. 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 Thank you. I want, really wanted to show this marble cycle. Yeah. And, and 
also, actually, the song is very repetitive since it's a 64 bar. And I think one, we had the idea of the black marble quite late, but I agree with you, it's a little bit making the video because you already heard the melody maybe eight times. Yeah. <laughs> and when the black marble starts there in the last chorus, it's a new story that starts in the video. So what we wanted to do is that if we just make one marble stick out from the rest, and then we follow it all around, how it, how it goes all around, and then it drops, plays that note at that point, and then we go out again. And so it was, actually, we already recorded half the video when we had the ID. You mentioned in your videos a bit about the impression for the for the audience when you're playing the machine with the instruments. How how do you mean? With, for example, the kick drum, you're about to see when it hits and so on. Oh yeah, you mean well, yeah the the visual yeah, part yeah, of it. You mean yeah, yeah that it's it's a little bit like with food I think with music that it has to look nice on the plate. <laughs> you eat also with your eyes. <laughs> you also listen to music with your eyes. And for example, now where I I'm very inspired by a video called Pipe Dreams by a group called Any Music, yeah, which a lot of I've always seen. wondered. Yeah, <laughs> you you can see it. Uh, yeah. And then if you look at the Any Music music videos. All the instruments move so so cool because it's it's computer graphics. And they move like when they're played, they move like this. So what I'm trying to recreate with this is actually the movement of the any music instruments. So that was a little bit why we made these ones flex. Uh, and um, on the and on a, on a big stage or also on film, you you don't see the marble falling so well. So. This one is going to sit on a long arm, the arm moves, and this also moves. And that's all to try to recreate. So you understand, you see the movement. When this falls, and you film that in 25 frames per second, it's one and a half frame, or two frames. So I've even in the video, I've some parts went into frames and made the marbles stronger to actually even be able to perceive them on the video. How much of the song dictated the machine and, the, and how much of the machine dictated the song? Um, <laughs> I was, I was, I had, I had 132 versions of the song in my computer. It was like different versions because I really wanted to make the maximum of the limitations it had. And I was also feeling like when I spent so much time making the <coughs> machine, I needed a song that could live up to the machine. So I think, <coughs> I think, uh, I mean, the accompaniment of the song is like, and here comes a chord that would need this note to, but but you don't have it. So I think uh, quite a lot come from the machine first. And for example, what I'm telling in one of the videos, the song is first in E minor. But then if you play C major under E minor, it sounds nice, that becomes, uh, that becomes nice. So first we play the whole round in E minor, then this plays the same thing again, and then I change the score to C major on the, with the bass, because I can change that manually. And uh, I thought it was very fun to like, challenge the limitations of the machine with the kind of music. And what, this, if I would only have placed these maybe here, so this would have been longer, then I wouldn't have been able to play the melody of the Marble Machine song, but I would have been able to play any, any, any number of music in any number of tempos. And what I'm holding in my hand is the first plywood piece that I have cut on my new CNC machine. So CNC machine is a machine that can cut out pieces that we have designed in the computer. I have four engineers who help out who are volunteering on the Marble Machine X project. The last okay. one who entered the group is from Volvo. So he's doing the Marble Machine X on his spare time. He's working on the new generation lithium ion batteries, otherwise. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the guy next to him is the guy building the gear boxes for the Volvo trucks. <laughs> um, and so it's, 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 and their profession is to kill IDs to, until the ID crawl up and survive. Because then you have stress tested ID. I didn't do that on this machine. I was like, oh, oh, good, let's move on to next problem. You know, but if, if I do this, it's, oh, it doesn't work. And that's what happened when you crank it. So, that, 
what is very fun for me and where I am now is, is this engineering process where you build in margins of errors and uh, that's why the margin X is going to work. The thing is, what I wanted to show you is that when I cut out these pieces on the CNC machine, they have a precision of 0 0.001 millimeter or something like that. So they end up exactly the same. On the Marmachin X, we're going to have 38 of each of those. So that's like, you can see the difference from these hand cut pieces to the machine cut pieces. And just to kill a little misconception about CNC and 3D printing, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, people think that all oh, the machines are taking over, we're not doing anything by ourselves, but <laughs> it's not true. It's very time consuming, but we're gonna reach a very good uh, precision level. Yeah? So you always say that this was a waste of time, but do you think that this one would have happened without this one? No, Especially without the, the YouTube video. Now that is, it's of course, a very good question, and, and of course, it's funny. Uh, that we should not be so afraid of making mistakes because there is this fantastic story about the film Jaws, you know, from Steven Spielberg <laughs> with a shark. There is a fantastic documentary called The Shark's Not Working. <laughs> when they're recording this film, they're on the walkie-talkie all the time because they had this big mechanical shark and it was not working. So there was, in this movie set, super expensive, you know, it cost 10 million dollars every day <laughs> or something like that. And they're like, okay, shark's not working, shark's not working. And the filmmaker I made a video with, Hannes, when I was really, really, really feeling, ah, and I was throwing the headphones in the floor, I was like, Martin, and then he told me the story, Martin, think about Jaws, because the sharks were not working, that's why we don't see the shark for a full hour in the beginning of the yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why Steven Spielberg became the star he is today. So, so uh, <laughs> that was why the movie became so popular. And there is this cheesy saying about the artist not to never fall, but to get up after each fall. And it's very cheesy, but also very true. And I think I, think I, I have to th thank the machine for not working, because I'm going to build a much better one, which will be much more fun to work with. So it's, it was not a waste of time, but some... At one point I came to the workshop and took away six months of work in one day. Uh, so I took away half... I, I, it was like this section, I rebuilt it, and I, so I took away and I saw the machine, oh shit, this is where I was six months ago. And in a way, I think that was maybe a waste of time that my engineers are now uh, keeping me away from doing things but like you again. would never ha happen to meet them without this. Exactly. No, exactly. No, so it's of course, I like your bike shirt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I want the same, I love bikes. Handmade. I made well, it you made it? Yeah. Oh, so cool, it's really great. But there's one part in the cocktail that's also there, sheer determination. And that's, that, that's good, and I, th I, think, I think when you see 10 seconds of the video, you, you understand that something has happened. And that you can see what was most admirable, apart from the wonderful music and the machine, is that you know someone has been so crazy, and they have <laughs> yeah, taken it down, and they've started again, and they have failed, and they have got up again, yeah. which is something that I think is even more inspiring than it all together. Because you see that um, there is this idea, and you have brought it to an end, and that is that's so admirable. But that, that's that, that's very... Yeah, I, I really like, like that you're saying that. I, I like that that come, comes through, because in our... I think people have, on my YouTube videos, after one minute, I see in the analytics, 50% of the audience is gone after one minute on every video. So that's the attention span we have now. Everything is so fast. So then when you feel that someone actually puts 16 months in something, it's a little bit, kind, some kind of hopeful feeling <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's a luxury to spend time on stuff nowadays. And I feel that from the Museum Spielcock as well. The workshop in Museum Spielcock is absolutely magical and they are repairing these mechanical instruments with the same kind of craft ID that we're going to do it until it's done. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I, yeah. It was nice to hear that. Yes? Uh, can I ask the one last question? Yeah. Uh, I heard a rumor that you uh, uh, tested a lot of different types of rice for the snare drum. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit of an internal joke, because I w once was in a studio where we were trying a Neve compressor compared to a Neve clone compressor. And I think it's a lot of bullshit going on in the, like, it's a lot of like, who, who screams hardest, have, because it's very subjective, right, sound. And then the other guy says, 
Yeah, this one has definitely more brilliance in the top mid frequencies. <laughs> and, I, and that never, so I always said that Basmat derives compared to Jasmine has much more brilliance in the top mid frequencies. <laughs> and uh, that's why you should always use only that. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for listening, of course, for visiting our museum, and uh, and hope you stick around for a little while, and hope to see you again some other day. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much.